Hi everyone, as we know, the LIBOR, which had been the star of the interest rate system, is going to be replaced by the RFR, which you might know as alternative reference rates and by several other names, and include the likes of SOFA, SONIA and ASTA. These are overnight rates, but this all fine. When the LIBOR disappears, new deals will reference these new benchmarks. But what about the existing trades that reference LIBOR? Their cash flows will then reference a rate that won't exist anymore, so what to do? Worry not, because ISDA and Bloomberg are on your side. After multiple public consultations, ISDA has come up with the fallback mechanism which Bloomberg has implemented, so the solution is already in place. Our purpose here is to explain the reasoning behind the ISDA calculation methodology, which is probably easier to understand if we focus on one tenor. So let's focus on 3 months sterling LIBOR. The approach for other currencies will be similar, just the day count convention will be slightly different. Of course this rate varies over time, so it is a function of time. Now what would be a sensible replacement for this LIBOR? Considering the direction of travel is to the new RFR, which for GBP is chosen to be SONIA, so an obvious choice would be the compounded SONIA over 3 months, in line with the term of the LIBOR. This won't be equal to LIBOR, of course, because it is kinda an average of the overnight rates, while LIBOR is unsecured borrowing for 3 months. But if you add the spread to this rate, then you see this will equal the LIBOR. Easy to see because the compounded SONIA appears with plus and minus signs, but we don't want this compounded SONIA to drop out of the calculation for it is the future, so we keep it and instead try to proxy the spread. This spread won't be available once LIBOR disappears, so an easier solution would be to determine it using some historical or implied data and then assume it remains fixed over time. So we are after some kind of average. And this is what the ISDA fallback really tries to achieve. Let's dive into the details. Let's say we are interested in comparing LIBOR to the compounded SONIA as it a particular date in September. So let's get the calendar. We have the 7 days of the week and we can then list the September dates. We will dim the weekends and other holidays. We then move to the next month and so forth. Let's say we have the LIBOR observation as at the 15th of September. We can get this value from the LIBOR administrator website which is the ICE IBI. For GBP as you know, the settlement period is 0 days so this rate implies cost of unsecured borrowing for 3 months. We can determine the maturity date by advancing to the same date of the next month, then the following month and finally to the third month. It is a working day, so the 15th of December is the maturity date. The main point is, if you want to borrow for this period, the relevant benchmark is the 3 months LIBOR, whose value will be known at the beginning of this 3 months term. If you were to use SONIA as benchmark for this loan, you will get a whole bunch of rates. Each rate refers to borrowing for one day because SONIA is an overnight rate. So the first rate applies for one calendar day. So it covers the day from the 15th to the 16th. And the next two rates then cover the next two calendar days. The Friday rate on the other hand covers three calendar days. So this rate will be charged for 3 days and so forth. The final rate we see here covers the 1 day period from the 14th to the 15th of December. The fancy compounded RFR formula that we saw before just aggregates these daily rates to determine a composite rate. This SONIA based system is different from LIBOR in two ways. We don't know the interest rate at the beginning of the period it is revealed over time to us, one day at a time. Secondly, the rate gets published with one day delay. So the rate that applies from the 14th to the 15th will get published on the 15th, which is the day we are supposed to repay the money. 
It is going to cause logistic issues, right? Repaying the money on the same day that you get to know the amount is not what many operation processes are designed to do. And the OIS swap markets, this issue is fixed via payment delay, usually two days. And the loans markets, on the other hand, this is usually mitigated by introducing observational shift of five days. ISDA went for an observation shift of two business days. So you ignore the last two observations and then add two observations at the beginning. Now, if you use that fancy compounding RFR formula, you will get the composite rate for this shifted three months period. And comparing this to the LIBOR, we see the spread is about 0.005%. So if we were to fix the spread at this one day value, then going forward, when LIBOR is nowhere to be found, we can use this composite Sonia plus the spread as a replacement for the three months LIBOR. So the composite Sonia will reflect the ongoing market conditions and the spread will be fixed. But this spread will vary over time. So had we chosen another day, it would have been different. By the way, here, the number of calendar days in the LIBOR and the shifted Sonia are the same because we lose one weekend when we discard the last two observations and we gain another weekend when we add two observations at the front. But this isn't generally the case. For example, if we had the LIBOR as at the 25th, then of course the maturity will be three months from the 25th. So we advance one month, then another, and then another. But we land on Christmas Day, which is a holiday. The modified following conventions means we find the next business day within the same month, meaning we ignore the weekend and advance to the 28th. But 28th is a Boxing Day holiday, so the maturity date will be the 29th. Now, if we discard the last two observations and add two at the front, the net number of calendar days is not zero, so the LIBOR and the shifted Sonia periods are not equal in terms of calendar days. This two-day backward shift is what was agreed in the public consultation. The actual implementation was done by Bloomberg, who came up with a slightly more convoluted implementation. What they do is first establish the start date of the compounding period by applying the two-day shift to the LIBOR reset date. The end date is then determined by advancing this date by three months, as per the modified following conventions. You can see this won't always give you two days between the date that the final rate becomes known and the payment date. So they have to then adjust the start date so that there's always at least two business days from the end date of the compounding period to the payment date. We are going to stick to the simple implementation of applying the two days backward shift to both the start and end dates of the relevant LIBOR dates. The difference won't matter for our purposes here as it won't affect the conclusions. But for actual cash flows, please use the Bloomberg calculation as that's what the market has accepted. Anyways, this is a minor issue in comparison to the question we face, which is how does one decide what day to use for the purpose of determining the spread? There's no single answer that will please everyone. So is the consulted on multiple options? Concluding that median of historical spread over five years is going to please the majority. Let's have a look at the historical data to see whether the median makes sense. We will show the data from the first week of 2000. We can source the three months LIBOR from the Fed website. We can calculate the start and end dates of the LIBOR for each day. Apply the two days business shifts and then using the daily Sonia data from the Bank of England website. We can generate the corresponding compounded Sonia. We can also plot the daily Sonia, which is a bit more scattered compared to the compounded Sonia, as one would expect. Notice the way we have plotted the data means the compounding RFR at a date represents the average of the following Sonia observations over the three months. This is because we align RFR date to the forward-looking LIBOR reset dates. The three series seems to follow the same pattern which is easily seen if one plots the policy rate. This is the UK base rate. So you can see the LIBOR and Sonia follow the trend set by the Bank of England. However, one sees the spread between the LIBOR and the compounded Sonia is quite volatile. 
is quite high in period of financial stress. So this is the financial crisis of 2007-2008 and this is the period of liquidity squeeze. One would generally expect the spread to be high when the rates are high, but this doesn't seem to be the case here, probably because the rates were reduced during the financial crisis, so the story is not straightforward. Anyways, we don't see evidence against the choice of absolute spread that is the choice. So let's focus on this spread time series. If we consider the whole observation period, we see the median is 15 basis point. We can also plot its distribution using histogram. The large values are coming from the 2007 financial crisis, as you would expect. ISDA decided to use the median over the last five years period. The end date of this period is the LIBOR cessation event, which for the GBP LIBOR happened on the 5th of March, when the FCA announced that this LIBOR will cease by the end of 2021. This event fixed the period over which the median of the spread is computed. However, it will be used only when the LIBOR is discontinued, which as per the announcement is by the end of this year. The median of spread over this 5 years period, as you can see, is lower at 12 basis point. Note the end date of 5th of March means we only consider data before the 5th of March in the calculation of the median. This is to avoid the impact of any potential distortion caused by the announcement. In terms of the two series, it means we will only use LIBOR codes up to the 4th of December because the LIBOR observed on the 4th of December will cover the period from the 4th of December to the 4th of March, the day before the announcement was made. To see, let's bring back the calendar and let's advance the dates. If you have the 3 month GBP LIBOR as at the 4th, the maturity would be 3 months later, which is the 4th of March. To calculate the corresponding compounded Sonia for this LIBOR observation will require Sonia observations toward the LIBOR term, so any later LIBOR observations will take us past the 5th of March, considering the 2 days business lag that we need for consistency as well. As we saw, had a longer period been chosen, the median would have been different. We have also added the mean, the average. See how large it is compared to the median. Let's see how things change as one reduces the length of the observation by one month. The distribution is characterized by a long tail, with the tail being associated with the periods of financial stress and crisis. As we remove the earlier observations, we see movements towards the lower end. We now start removing the build up to the financial crisis of 2007-2008. So we lose mass in the right tail and then the large moves. We lose more of the tail as we remove the period of liquidity squeeze. Did you see how volatile the mean had been compared to the median? So the median seems appropriate if one discards the impact of the financial crisis this might not seem right, but remember this benchmark is going to be used for a lot of purposes such as interest rate on your mortgage. Why should you be paying higher interest because banks are considered high risk? So it probably makes sense not to include these periods of financial crisis. Also, this Sonia seems well behaved during the financial crisis, but the main trading back then happened around LIBOR. So when Sonia becomes the primary benchmark, it might start behaving differently in periods of financial stress and liquidity squeezes. Not necessarily so, but just saying history may not be a perfect guide to the future. In terms of implementation, ISDA has amended the definitions via supplements or any agreements made after the 25th of January will have this compounded RFR plus the spread as the standard fallback. Of course, parties can agree to override the standard template if they like. For the legacy LIBOR contracts, this is the contracts executed before the 25th of January, ISDA has come up with the protocol 
where parties can agree to amend the fallback, but this isn't going to be win-win for everyone. It really depends on what instruments do you have on the books and other things such as what hedging arrangements etc are in place. So please do analyze the impact on your books before signing up to the protocol. Please give a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos on this topic and I look forward to seeing you in the next.